Hey there, this is Chris with Westside Technology Solutions. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you exactly how to build a membership site using Payload CMS, the same system I use for my other client projects with a lot of success. If you run a subscription-based business, this could be really useful for you. Before we dive in, I just wanted to talk a little bit about why Payload CMS is perfect for a membership site. Unlike some other CMS systems where you need multiple plugins or tons and tons of custom code, Payload already has an authentication system that's built right in. It gives you complete control over user management, content restrictions, and integration with processors, all using just JavaScript and React. This means the site is faster, it's better secured, and there's lower cost for development. So I set up this payload site here. Um, it's pretty basic, it's just a basic membership site. And how it works is we've got some content here. And if we look at my user that I'm currently logged into as to view this site, um, you can see I've got the free membership that I'm signed up for. I'm not currently paying and I have not started a subscription yet. So we've got a couple tiers for the subscription, the highest one being premium followed by a basic subscription. And then there's a free subscription that makes all content free to members. And then there's public content, which is available to everyone, regardless of if they are subscribed or not. So being that I'm currently a free member, I don't have access to the premium content or the basic content. So how this would work is I would go to the membership page and I would click on upgrade to upgrade my membership. And this brings me to a Stripe checkout. I'm gonna fill this out. It's not real data, it's just test mode. So once I subscribe, a few things are gonna happen. Stripe is going to accept this payment and create a subscription. And Stripe's gonna send a webhook event to my payload CMS server and update my user accordingly. So now the subscription has been successful. It's gonna take just a moment to reflect the changes and then we'll be redirected to the content page. So now looking back at my user in the payload dashboard, you can see the membership tier is set to premium the payment status is active, and we also have a subscription start and end date. And then if we head back to the content page, you can see that all the content is unlocked. And then of course, from the Stripe dashboard, you can see that we've got a subscription created for this transaction. You can see when it started, when the next invoice is, and the amount, and Stripe will just handle this from here on out. Also from here, apart from being able to access the content that the user subscribed to, they can also downgrade their membership. In a real life example of this, we would also create an option for them to cancel it as well. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about how this is put together. So looking at the code, the first thing that I did was I updated the user's collection. I added several fields, including roles, membership tier, payment status, Stripe customer ID, subscription ID, in the subscription start and end date. These were all fields that were visible here in the dashboard. We just had to create them so that we could use them to keep track of the subscription. We also created a content collection. There are some basic fields here like title, featured image, summary, the content itself. Um, but the important things here are the required tier to be able to access the content, the status, and, um, and then there's an optional category. And this was all set up too in the code base configuration of Payload CMS. So the next thing you need to do for this project is you need to integrate it with Stripe. This is really simple. Um, first of all, you need to make sure you have all these ENV variables. The most important ones that you might not already have are the Stripe secret key, the publisher will key, and the webhook secret. So to do this, you would create a Stripe account if you don't already have one, you'd head to the developer section in your Stripe dashboard, and then you get your API keys. I'm just using the test keys just for demonstration purposes, but the same way it works for production. So once these keys are added to your ENV, then you'll wanna go and create the products and prices. So I went into my Stripe dashboard here and I created these two memberships. Um, if we look at the basic membership, for example, I set the price here and the recurring charge cadence. So it's $9.99 a month. The other thing that you'll need for this is you'll need to get the price ID. Um, so after I created the product, I came back into here, I clicked into the price, and then I took it right out of the URL here. And then here in my code base, I created a map mapping these prices to the basic tier and the premium tier 
so it's easier to reference throughout my code base. So the next thing I did was I made sure I had the Stripe CLI installed. I installed this using Homebrew with brew install Stripe slash Stripe CLI slash Stripe. Once this was installed, I followed the directions here to log into Stripe via the CLI. Then I followed the directions here to forward events to a local endpoint. I had Stripe listening on the port of the project and I pointed it to my webhook URL, which we'll get to in just a moment. Once I ran this command here, Stripe gave me a webhook secret variable and I used that to complete the environment variables in my env file. For production, this looks a little bit different. You'd go to your developer dashboard, webhooks, and you would add an endpoint. Then you'd put in the full URL of your webhook and choose events to listen for. We didn't have to do that here just because this is a local server and that's it. So then Stripe sends a webhook event to the server and this function here, this handle checkout session completed function is the one that handles the logic to handle the subscription. There is a little bit of logic involved in the parent function where this is called to verify that the request is coming from Stripe. I'm not gonna get too into that, but it's pretty standard. And then from here, what we do is we take the data that we get from Stripe we find the price ID, we match it up to the map that I previously referenced in the code base, and finally we find the user and update the data accordingly. As you can see, we're looking for the client reference ID which we send in our checkout. We assign it its Stripe customer and subscription IDs, we give it the membership tier, we set its payment status to active, and update the subscription dates. Once these fields are updated, they reflect here in payload CMS, and their membership status is reflected site-wide from there. So I know that's a lot, but hopefully it makes sense. From a business perspective, an approach like this could save you money in several ways. One, you're not paying recurring plugin costs or revenue sharing with other membership platforms. Next, this really didn't take me all that long to develop. Um, because there's a faster development time, it means there's lower upfront costs. And finally, you have complete customization to match your exact business needs. Anyway, thank you for tuning in and learning more about my emoji shop. If you have questions about implementing something like this for your business, feel free to drop a comment or reach out to me directly. I'd love to hear what kind of membership site you're building. And don't forget to subscribe for more Payload CMS tutorials and content and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. I'm going to be doing more and more of these. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with your membership platform.